So we're going to talk a little bit about Kurt and Natasha, a relationship. So this is one of the short stories that we looked at over the course of our Connections Across Text study. So Kurt and Natasha, a relationship, just explicitly looking at the title to start with, is written all in lowercase. So this is a significant feature right from the beginning a significant technique used by our author Tamar Janowitz in order to reduce the power of each of the characters. So normally if you have a sentence, um, in the beginnings of sentences of course would have a capital, also significantly names always have a capital and that is because of the sort of power and respect that we give to those words. So you'll notice also is that specific concepts, if they're really important or they have some sort of um, gravitas is the word I want to use, to those words, then they will use a capital letter. Um, that is because it means that they're a little bit more important than their specific words surrounding them. However, by using lowercase letters across the entirety of the title, then Tamar Janowitz is actually breaking down all those concepts of power or importance or um, allusion towards important events. So that's just the title. We're going to explicitly look a little bit at our male protagonist in this text, Kurt. But in order to give you a little bit more of a justification about why Kurt is described so negatively, it's important to talk a little bit about Tamar Janowitz herself. So Tamar Janowitz is a feminist writer from the 1980s and she wrote this short story is part of a collection um, called Slaves of New York. So the, the premise of Slaves of New York is that it was looking at uh, both men, women, explicitly she looked at men and women and the ways that they interacted in a world that was rapidly shifting um, gender roles. So we've come from a traditional period, so the 1950s with the height of gender-based roles um, and the way that you would behave, the way the jobs that you would get, um, your sort of ability or strength or assumptions around you, those were all sort of really strong in 1950s America. 1980s America was hugely radically different. So we started to get more women into positions of power. We had media that was sort of pushing this strength of women agenda. And Tamma Janowitz was really hooking into this positive pro-woman mentality and energy of this time. So Kurt and Natasha was one example of the interaction between the the we're going to discuss them as two genders um, just for the purposes of this analysis as because she was looking at the dichotomy between um, a sort of black and white men and women are the only genders kind of narrative view just for the um, purposes of this analysis. So this text in particular looks at the power shifts between men and women and it touches a little bit upon the um, anger I suppose that was existing within the male population because of the growing influence of feminism and explicitly looks at the sort of um, role of sex and power with um, combined with your your job and your financial predicaments as well. So if we're talking explicitly about Kurt, um, Kurt is right in the beginning set up as a character that we're not supposed to like. So I've just condensed a little bit of looking across this sort of first paragraph uh, and pulled out a significant quote that I think really encapsulates our initial impression of this character. So it begins with Kurt, a handsome blonde German artist, always seems he should be dressed in Lederhosen marching with the Hitler Youth. So by inserting that reference to Hitler Youth, Tamar Janowitz is actually using a technique uh, called illusion. So illusion, not I, <laughs> with an A, um, refers to an expression designed to call something to mind without mentioning it explicitly. Um, it's either an indirect or a passing reference. So while Natasha is not explicitly saying that Kurt was as bad as a Nazi, by mentioning this idea of the Hitler Youth as a passing reference, it allows the reader to sort of make a connection between this character and something that we are conditioned and aware of thinking as a negative um, thing to be associated with. It wouldn't be a positive character that would be um, sort of paired with this idea of marching with Hitler Youth. Um, 
especially to the audience that Tamar Janowitz is writing for. So as a feminist writer in the 1980s, she's also writing for the liberal reader, generally women, um, who were reading at this time period and of course into the future as these ideas become more and more applicable. So even from the first paragraph, it's made clear that we are not supposed to find Kurt a interest well he's an interesting character but we're not supposed to find him a character that we align ourselves with as a positive the next piece that moves into of course she, he meets natasha who is a strong woman alluring not quite what he was um looking for on the evening but he is sort of attracted to her strength and then towards the bottom of the second page we end up with this interaction as he takes her home and he takes out a roll of adhesive tape and began, begins to make love to her. So the quote there, uh, just condensed in that third to last paragraph, Kurt took out a roll of adhesive tape and began to make love to her. In this interaction, it's really interesting that Tamar Janowitz has actually decided to use the phrase make love, as that is tends to be a romantic way of phrasing it. It's full of positive connotations and makes us think of sort of rom-coms or um, novels but in this short story it actually is quite a I believe it's an oxymoron to the actual situation that's occurring there so even it ha he has uh, Tamma Janowitz has this discussion this little moment where she mentions that she is struggling in the bed and and this I this word the use of ripping is really aggressive it's um, not a pleasant way of of describing this interaction the technique that Tamma Janowitz is actually using in this moment is symbolism so the this act of um, making love to Natasha in this sort of unpleasant way that definitely, I mean, it's literally taking away her ability to move by binding her and puts her in a really vulnerable position. It's a symbolic way of Kurt sort of dominating her and, and showing that he is stronger and more powerful than her. Um, so the use of symbolism in this moment is demonstrating that power imbalance that Kurt is trying to make. However, of course, um, once he does this and he peels off the bandages, he's expecting her to have been really terrified. There's, he's given her every reason to have been terrified, but she goes on to start talking about, you know, which program on TV was your favorite, the Munsters or the Adams Family? And this really throws him for a loop. So he decided to make love to her again, this time without the bandages, but it was not as satisfying as the first time had been. Um, this sort of draws into this concept of reinterpreting events in order to gain back power. So Natasha turns something that could be incredibly devastating towards her and flips this on its, on its head in order to subvert his expectations to basically undermine this display of dominance and power by reinterpreting it as a the beginning of a relationship. Um, so Tamma Janowitz is using Natasha's interaction to subvert this idea that Kurt is taking something from her and rather she starts to move in and she um, basically it's written as if she victimizes Kurt despite the actual events of the text really placing Natasha in the role of a victim. However, the way it's described through, because it is focalized through Kurt's experience, it appears that the negativity or the oh whoa poor is me um, is from Kurt. So it puts us in a really interesting position where Natasha holds all, the, all of the power despite being victimized by Kurt's actions. Natasha owns this moment and she becomes stronger and eventually through the entire relationship become strong enough to overpower Kurt. So I think it's really interesting just to jump from here for a moment and through this concept of the patriarchy and don't don't roll your eyes at me <laughs> but this is where this text is going. So the patriarchy is a system or society of government in which the father or eldest male is the head of the family and descent is reckoned through the male line. So that's the you know the definition of it. However, it refers to something 
a, a lot more. I mean, it's a system of society where men hold the power and women are largely excluded from it. The patriarchy refers to a system that is oppressive towards a female presenting or a woman um, because they are not in any positions of power that it runs all through the male line although it's it's a huge concept from there um i would definitely look into it because once you start it'll just turn into a giant um hole that will suck you down forever and you'll notice it everywhere but i found this really good quote that unfortunately doesn't have a attribution it just says anonymous but it says to those accustomed to privilege, equality feels like oppression. And I think that's what Kurt is experiencing in the relationship with Natasha, is this idea that he loses power and is overwhelmed by Natasha is focalized through Kurt so that we can see just how negative he feels about this experience, despite the fact that all through this section where he is, you know, gradually losing his power and feeling so negative hatred towards Natasha she's not actually doing anything that is aggressive it's just that she's not being pushed down by his power and it's interesting that it's actually Natasha's refusal to be broken by him that is beginning to break him so in this kind of concept what you can draw upon with Kurt is that he is so used to being in power and he revels in being his pa in power that when Natasha is not broken, he really struggles with understanding where he fits into the system of equality because he has been brought up and encouraged within a patriarchal society. So that is actually only the first page um, that I've looked at but that is sets up this idea that Kurt is our negative male protagonist and he is using and wielding his power in a way that is oppressive towards our female characters and it's really uncomfortable for this character so if you're going to be talking about Kurt specifically there are some techniques that you might find really useful so if you're wanting to talk about Kurt as a negative character, the first place to start is with that allusion to Hitler Youth. It's a really strong technique. It places us in a position where we are unable to actually feel sorry for the character of Kurt and we recognize that he is a negative force. It's not someone to align ourselves with right at the beginning and that's why his actions towards Natasha are so horrific. And that's how we recognize that oxymoron between making love and what can be described as abuse. 